talking about uh, the future of cyber cyber security what do you think that holds for us in the near future well cyber security i would say probably is evolving uh, on a day to day basis it's it, like you know earlier we used to consider that it is sufficient to have an ids and an ips system in place uh, sim in place but today it is much more than that we are mm-hmm. talking about threat intelligence we are talking about xdr so that's where things are shifting to but would that be the end goal and the end path well probably not the reason probably that we could probably see is that even when you're looking at various different frameworks like there is a framework of nist today you have frameworks like is 27000 2013 2019 we are also talking about data privacy laws that are going to come in and kick in so with all this coming into picture probably the way that the cyber security framework is probably going to evolve is going to be as fast as how you are having the covid mutation happening probably on a lighter note but then that's the speed at which we are probably seeing that there's going to be a lot of changes in the cyber security uh, relevance that is going to hold stake absolutely uh now dr mukund uh you know because cyber security has got enhanced the seriousness has uh, set in amongst uh, you know the respective audience uh what do you think should be the key components that should be looked at and stressed upon when you consider uh, security solutions for a business what do you think are the key elements that one should consider very important like i'll uh, answer two things that you probably mentioned over here two things that you talked about right uh it's very important to establish certain kpis and metrics from a cyber security perspective it could be as simple as mean time to detect mttd or mean time to respond or it could also mean uh you could talk about certain other key metrics like, like number of threats prevented number mm-hmm. of security awareness programs conducted in your organization because right. what happens is that in your organization irrespective of what solution you deploy your employees are your first and last line of defense so it is very important in terms of making them cyber aware could you also do mock sessions or mock phishing attacks to ensure that you are still able to identify those weeds in the system and pull out that weeds and ensure that you are still able to retrain them if required because they are the point of infiltration where people can create backdoors and enter your system but coming to the other part of what should be looked at from a solution perspective right in case tomorrow i'm working with different solution providers the first thing that i would probably do is also look at uh, so i've designed a security questionnaire which is probably has like i would say 100 to 150 parameters that right. i would probably engage uh with the partner of choice and i do an audit and evaluation to understand how secure the solution is the reason why that becomes very important is like you know if you don't do that due diligence there could always be a back door in their system through which they could enter your network say for example have they done a vapt as simple as that now if you're talking about a vapt vulnerability assessment and penetration testing did they use a oasp top 10 or a cw top 25 model what model did they use like you know right. both are pri- 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 primarily same but then there is a slight difference in these two and have they done it through empaneled auditors what tools and mechanisms have they used to do this activity it could be as simple like you know it could be in, it could also be in something like a cross site scripting attack that could probably be happening on their application or it could also be a sql injection that could also be happen through which you would always find there are opportunities for these elements and threat actors to probably create your backdoor and enter into your system so okay. i do a very clear audit of any uh, third party uh, partner that i want to work with or solution that i want to take or even for the applications that we build internally there are certain protocols that i've defined and through which i ensure that we are having uh, like you know the right amount of security in place true true 
Well, uh, I'm sure the other ones looking out for cybersecurity solutions for their company are definitely definitely taking a lot from what you just said. Now, uh, another aspect uh, is cyber insurance, right? Which is still at a very nascent stage in India. Uh, what do you think? Will it grow in the coming years? Or where are we at when we talk about cyber insurance in India? Very interestingly, uh, Roshan, what's happened is post-COVID, there's been a shift in the way cyber insurance has started. Earlier, it used to be the banks who used to be behind us asking, why don't you take cyber insurance? The equation LHS equal to RHS has just got shifted. True. Like today, we are behind them to take a cyber insurance. And earlier, it used to be a simple process for us to get a cyber insurance. But today, for us to qualify for cyber insurance, I need to showcase what are my current security standards? What are my current security protocols? What are my cyber security frameworks in place? based on which your premium could probably change or there could also be a possibility that some of the banks could say that no we may not be able to give you cyber insurance so the whole game the equation has probably changed so when we said pre-covid and post-covid there's been a quite a bit of shift especially with a lot of attacks that we have been able to see in the recent past Right now, cyber insurance is becoming very important. But again, it becomes very important for the CIO or the CISO to build what is needed into the cyber insurance. Um, because typically what happens is that when you reach out to a cyber insurance, there is a very limited scope that would ask any insurance company for any insurance provides you. It becomes very important that you're able to pin down what needs to be uh, what needs to be going into that insurance perspective so i think there's a lot of shift there's definitely been a lot of shift in terms of cyber insurance and the way that companies today want to look at cyber insurance and again what do you want to insure against it could also be in terms of do you want right. to look at any users raising concerns or like you know people who are using your applications data privacy related issues that are also happening so you could also look at cyber insurance from that perspective you know, there's a lot of shift in terms of cyber insurance that is going on today true true now uh, dr mughal as much as cyber insurance is uh, getting a faster adapt, uh, adoption in india uh, the attackers are also evolving right uh, what do you think organizations can do to stay ahead of them? Well, I would probably say that be part of the game. The reason why I say that is like, you know, to be the hacker, you got to be a hacker. Got to be a hacker. True. So probably it becomes very important that you have a red team and a blue team in your organization. The reason why I say that is like, yes, how do I probably try to look at uh, outside in and try to break into my own organization so that I'll be able to identify what could be the various flaws that could be there, the vulnerabilities that could be there so that they could be passion time. So typically you have different kinds of, uh, what do I say, white hat hackers, gray hat hackers, black hat hackers and so on. But then it becomes very important that you establish two separate teams. One is your red team and the blue team. And then you let them work independently and try to identify what are those concerns that could probably be there and then move towards that path. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, also another thing that you need to start looking at is a lot of threat based intelligence. So when you talk about threat intelligence is in terms of uh, what engines are your products probably be uh, are using. Are they evolving at the speed at which the threats are also evolving so that you get the right patches back in place? Right? It becomes so important that we cannot say today that I have implemented a particular solution and I'm secure. Gone are sure. those days. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so in that case, uh, would you suggest that building a team of cybersecurity people is better internally or rather outsourcing it to purely cybersecurity companies? 
I, I would say that again, you need to take a very hybrid approach over here. You need to have a, a pool of resources internally, because at the end of the day, cybersecurity is your business, right? And that's the way you look at it. And then you could take support from partners, third party, because there are a lot of different solutions that are apart from solution, there are various different thought processes that are evolving. And for your team to stay on top of it and also get the benefit of the latest and the greatest of the technologies, it becomes very essential that you have a very hybrid approach where you could look at uh, your bill, getting your own team in place and then also curating your team and having your team evolve over a point of time and having third party partners also there to support you. That uh, mix and match has to be there. Absolutely. An element of each thing has got to be in your solutions. So true. Yeah, true. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mukund, for sharing about cybersecurity. It's definitely an eye-opener.